Josh Johnson here. A lot to get to for Alabama over the next seven days. Increasing confidence on what's going to happen early next week, including who gets what. Where's the snow set up? Where's the ice set up? Where's the cold rain set up? Where's the warm rain set up? So uh, with no further ado, we will dive straight into the maps now. We'll show you what this looks like. Uh, so there's still some disagreement, but the overall concept here is getting a little clearer and a little better. So we will uh, throw me back on the screen here and do a little quick analysis of the data. So the GFS has done a pretty good job uh, in this pattern, believe it or not, at identifying when areas of low pressure are going to form along the Arctic front. So this is the concept. We'll take you just kind of day by day through the whole thing, and we'll focus a lot on what happens early next week, as that has been the subject of much conversation and speculation. Big Ice Storm tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Places like Little Rock, Memphis, maybe even Nashville. Um, I think that stays just north of Alabama. You'll notice by Thursday afternoon, you've got a cold front slicing through the deep south. Uh, north of it, you've got the ice problems. Where we are, though, it's simply a cold rain. That continues to move out. Then another wave forms along that front. So this that you see here is valid for Friday. Notice you've got more rain falling now across Alabama. So it rains again Friday on and off. Then we get into Saturday. This is Friday night into Saturday morning. Rain for us, the model hinting at a little sleet or freezing rain up in the Tennessee Valley. It's possible. It's a long shot. Even if it happens, I don't think there's enough of it to cause problems. Then most of Sunday is dry, we think. The latest run of the GFS keeps us mainly dry Sunday. Late, though, some rain begins to break out Sunday. Warm enough here for just rain on Sunday. Then you've got this big area of low pressure here in the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. That is throwing snow and ice all the way to the Gulf down in Texas. South Louisiana gets in on this, as does Arkansas. Potentially some heavy snow and ice accumulations across Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, and Tennessee. So this is valid Monday afternoon. Now the issue for us here is the track of this surface low. Uh, the high pressure up here in Iowa really needs to be up here over the Great Lakes. That would keep the surface low suppressed to the south and put us in a colder environment, but it's not. So the surface low, we call this the I-59 Special. It moves right across Alabama. That's a rain setup for us. That's not an ice setup or snow setup for our part of Alabama. There's some chance of a, the rain ending as a period of freezing rain or sleep, perhaps up in far north Alabama, uh, Monday night into Tuesday morning, but even that seems like a long shot at this point. Um, and then the air behind this is cold and it stays that way. Then out in the very long range, there's almost an identical setup that, that unfolds by next Thursday. That's really too far to really dive into a lot of the details on this whole thing. So here's the European Ensemble data. It, it suggests that we do, we do turn colder um, early next week. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, a change to colder air. One thing I would point out here, see these blue lines here? That's the spread in the ensembles. Remember, the ensembles are just, you take the model, you tweak one thing about it, and then you run it a second time. And then you tweak a different thing, and you run it a third time. With the European, we do this 50 times. So there are uh, 50 uh, members of this ensemble, cast, so to speak. Now, Look at the spread here. This is pretty wild. For afternoon highs, Monday, one model, one ensemble member shows 40. The other one shows 72. The reason there's such a big difference is the Arctic front will be very, very close to us Monday into Tuesday. So you'll notice it does the same thing Tuesday afternoon, 65 or 37. How's that for a range? Same thing by next Thursday, 42 or 75. So when we say model agreement, uh, there is model agreement on the idea of the surface low in its track Monday into Tuesday, but the temperatures are still, frankly, uh, very much a wild card in this whole thing. And I'll show you, too, I'll zoom in here off the European computer model and show you just how close of a call this whole thing becomes with these temperatures. So I'll take you to Monday morning off the European, and the Arctic front is entrenched to our northwest, um, and it stays that way. You'll notice by Tuesday morning, it really gets wild, so single digits into southeast Texas. 
But look at the spread in Alabama. We are right in that kind of battle zone here. Northwest Alabama, 23 degrees. Southeast Alabama, 63 degrees. What a difference. This is incredible stuff. So that's the reason there's the huge spread in the ensembles. If the, if the Arctic front makes it 100 miles farther east, we get a lot colder very quickly. But for now, we stick with the idea of a cold rain here Monday, Tuesday. Uh, historic ice, snow, and cold deep into the heart of Texas, South Louisiana, Arkansas, even southeast Mississippi. Crazy thing is the GFS is even colder. So that's the European you're looking at. Here's the GFS. Look at this. This is one of the most incredible model runs I have ever seen in terms of cold weather west of Alabama. So for us, we're on the fringe. It's still bitterly cold here next Tuesday morning, if this were to verify. Um, but look at this air mass over here with Texas and Louisiana, zero at Natchez, one at Jackson, six below in Shreveport, Louisiana. This is crazy talk, man. This is wild. This is wooly. It's probably wrong. So how's that? Uh, we'll show you the data. But... There's not a lot of support for this idea. Going back to the European ensembles, you'll notice here, you don't see anything like that really showing up in the data around here uh, as far as the ensemble mean goes. Yes, it turns colder, but are we talking single digits and below zero in Mississippi and Louisiana? Probably not. So for now, we'll be a little more conservative than the data you see here. Again, this is the GFS. Uh, we'll take it full screen so you can see it more clearly here, um, suggesting some pretty intense cold um, there off to the west of Alabama. So buyer beware on this idea. Again, uh, the European computer model for the same time frame. Yes, it is cold. It is not nearly as cold. The European ensembles are not as cold either. So there you go. So that's the overall idea here uh, for Alabama. We think it rains on and off. It's warm Thursday, no severe weather, but there's some thunderstorms probably Thursday night. Uh, it's colder with some rain Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, the best rain, the best chance of it staying dry is Sunday. Then on Monday, the Arctic front stalls just west of here. Surface low moves along it. West of that front, ice storm. Louisiana, southeast Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, western Tennessee. In Alabama, we're on the warm side of it, so for most or all of the state, it's probably just rain, but then as cold air rushes in on the back side, we'll have to watch for a change over to freezing rain or sleet, mainly way up in North Alabama, and even that, that, that that's threading a needle, so odds are stacked against it. We'll note the pattern stays cold for a big chunk of next week, so if you're looking for snow or ice in Alabama, uh, the overall pattern still bears watching, even though I think this Monday-Tuesday threat probably doesn't pan out there are other systems that will follow it that will need to be watched closely. All right. Appreciate you watching. Be sure to check out WSFA 12 News tonight at 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. Uh, I will be going on a, a brief hiatus. No, I am not sick. No, I am not going anywhere super exciting or fun. But uh, I will be off work Thursday and Friday. So we'll pick these videos back up next Monday. Thanks for watching. Hope you and yours have a wonderful day and a happy Valentine's Day.